everyone welcome back to my channel so today I am back with another video and this time I'm gonna be doing my feel it has been about three weeks now and of course it's time to do a feel the last time that I did them um, I didn't do a video because all I did was literally change the color on these four nails um, at first it was the bubble bath gel polish by OPI and then I changed it to this Yusha Touch by DND. So this is what they look like. As you can see, my bling always stays on really, really good. Um, again, it's been three weeks, so it is pretty grown out at this point. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a feel and then I'm also going to be cutting them down because I'm just having one of those moments where I want to go short, but you guys know that that's not going to last long. But anyways, of course, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut them down. I am going to be using this um, tip cutter. So I'm just going to put my nail through there. And I do want them pretty short. So I'm just going to cut away. And of course, just measure the nails against each other to make sure that they're all the same size. So once I have cut them down, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bling and I'm just going to be using a pair of nippers. Alrighty, so after I finished struggling to remove the bling, now I'm going to go in with my coarse drill bed to remove the gel polish. Remember that when you're removing gel polish, you do want to use a coarse drill bed and also make sure that it's a safety one because you don't want to fall on your natural nail or cut yourself with the coarse drill bed. So same thing as always, just starting around the cuticle area first, removing that gel polish, and then also just working your way throughout the whole nail to remove it from the entire nail. And then also if you do have any lifting, this would be the time to remove that lifting. And you're just going to do it with the very tip of your drill bed, making sure that you're really careful though. You don't want to cut yourself, and then you also don't want to fall down too much on the natural nail or the acrylic just enough to where that lifting is going to come off you don't want to use a pair of nippers to remove the um, lifting I've seen a lot of people do that before 
But if you do that, it's just going to cause the nail to lift even more. So you just want to go in there with your drill bit and just file it away. And this is exactly why we do a layer of acrylic underneath the acrylic. Now that I don't want the glitter on my nail, we can just file it off and there's still going to be acrylic underneath. So that's why, again, you have to do acrylic underneath your glitters or anything that you're encapsulating. That way you don't have to do a brand new nail. As you can see, the glitter is gone and there's still a nail tip as well as the acrylic on there. So now we're going to do the same thing on this hand. Remember, we just have to be a little bit more careful since I am right-handed.
Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go in and just push my cuticles back. I could have did it at the beginning, but I forgot. So I'm just using this metal cuticle pusher. And again, I'm just pushing back the cuticles. And this is just going to expose my new growth and then also help with reducing lifting. Alrighty, so after that, I'm gonna go ahead and dust my nails off. And then I'm gonna go in with a 180 sanding band. And this is how fast it was going whenever I was removing the gel polish. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slow it all the way down. And again, remember that when we're removing the shine from the natural nail, we're literally just filing really gently. We don't wanna damage our natural nail. Make sure that you get on the sides really, really good because that's where your lifting starts at. Same thing for the other hand. Again, we're just removing the shine from the natural nail and we're using a 180 sanding band. Alrighty, so after we finish removing the shine from the natural nail, we're gonna go in with the primer. Remember that we're only applying this to the natural nail, making sure that we also do not get it on the skin because if you do, sometimes it will burn if you have any little cuts. Alrighty, and as always, I'm gonna go in with my Mia Secret Acrylic System in the color pink. And then of course, I'm gonna be using one of my favorite brushes, which is my Alpha brush in a number nine. And it's an oval shape. And I will leave the link down in the description for you guys to, you know, check them out. Um, as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, that the link is no longer available. Are you, or sorry, the promo code is no longer available. Now there's a link and all you have to do is click on the link and it'll take you directly to the website and it'll already have the discount on there. But anyways, again, this is an alpha brush in a number nine and it's an oval shape. So of course, we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna dip the brush into the liquid. I don't know if you guys can see really good. Okay, so we're gonna dip the brush into the liquid, wipe it off. Dipping it into the powder. Remember that since we're doing a fill, we don't need a lot of product. We're going to go ahead and place it down closer to the cuticle area. Patting it down. And when I pat it down, as you can see, I'm spreading it out. That way it covers the entire nail. And then gently brushing it down. Get out. Get out. Uh-huh. Get out. Liam, get out. Oh, no. Liam. Alrighty, and then now as you can see, I have like a little lump right at the tip. So now I'm going to go in and apply another bead closer to the tip. So remember that when you're working, you want to make sure that you look at the nail from different angles. You don't want to just look at it from the top because a lot of the time you won't be able to see, you know, those imperfections unless you're looking at it from different angles. Whether it's from, you know, right here, from the side. And a lot of the time, the best angle is looking at it from right here. Like, literally from the side. 
because that's going to tell you if your tip is too thin, if the back of the nail is too thick, if you have a little bump or lump, like it's going to tell you a lot. Alrighty, so same thing for the next finger. We dip our brush into the liquid, wipe it off halfway, dip it into the powder. Remember, you want to make sure that you're not working with too much product because then you're going to have a lot of filing to do at the end. Being really gentle when you brush the acrylic down. If you brush too hard, it's going to get hard really fast or it's going to dry really fast. And then you're gonna have really lumpy nails. So make sure that when you're doing this, you're really gentle. And then also, as you can see from right here, it doesn't look too bad. But when I turn it over to the side, there's like a gap where it still needs acrylic. So again, it's super, super important that you look at the nail from different angles. And this is the nail that had the glitter on there, so of course it's going to need a little bit more acrylic because we did file away all that glitter. Okay, so that one looks pretty good. As you can see, we have a good enough apex. Our tip is right around the right thickness and we can move on to the next. So same thing over and over again. We dip our brush into the liquid, wipe it off, dip it into the powder, get a small bead, placing it closer to the cuticle area. Just patting it down to make sure that we're spreading the acrylic all over the nail and then we're brushing it down.
Alrighty, so I finished this hand. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. So same thing, as you notice, we're literally doing the same process over and over again on each nail. The only thing, of course, is, you know, sometimes our tip might be too thin on some nails, so of course we would add a little bit more on that nail. But other than that, it's gonna be the same step. So same thing, dipping our brush into the liquid, wiping it off, dipping it into the powder. And remember, you wanna make sure that you're not using too much product. That's a lot of, uh, or that's the biggest mistake that a lot of people make whenever they're, you know, first starting to do nails. They use too much product, and then at the end, they're having to do so much filing because of all of that product that they use. So it's better to just work with a little bit at a time. And then, of course, if you need to add more, then that's fine as well. But just work your way up and not, you know, work your way, how would I say? You don't want to work your
Alrighty, so I am done filling in my nails. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way. And after that, we're gonna go in with a 100-100 nail file. And we're just gonna shape up the nail. So I'm gonna do like a, try to do a coffin. They might be a little too short for it, but I also don't want them like super squared. So as always, we're filing at a 45 degree angle on the sides and then a 90 degree angle at the free edge. Just like that. Same thing for the rest, 45 degrees on the sides. Alrighty, so I finished shaping up this hand. As you can see, it's like in between coffin and square, not too narrow, not too wide. So same thing for the other hand. Again, same thing, 45 degree angle on the sides. And remember that when I'm filing my right hand with my left hand, instead of filing back and forth with the file, I literally just move this hand up and down and I feel like it helps a lot.
Alrighty, so I finished filing both of the hands. So again, we're filing at a 45 degree angle on the sides, just like this. And then exactly a 90 degree angle at the free edge. You don't want to hold it like this, like that, like this, like that. Literally 100 degrees angle. That way it's super, super straight. And then also it helps if you put your finger down on something. That way it's not, you know, wiggling around. But anyways, after we finish shaping up the nails, we're going to go in with a fine drill bed. I'm going to be using the one by my card it is a ceramic drill bed and honestly i feel like it's less coarse than the carbide ones because for a while i was having problems with it being so sharp i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and as always we're gonna start around the cuticle area first working our way from the right side over to the left side just going back and forth until we're able to see where the cuticle is where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is, that way we know that the product is not on the skin. Make sure that you even like pull back the side of your finger if you can to make sure that you're getting as close as you can to that cuticle area. And also make sure that you don't have your drill on too, you know, on a really high speed because you don't want to cut yourself either. Alrighty, so same thing for the other hand, but of course we want to make sure that we're really careful not to cut ourselves. But same thing, we're going around the cuticle area, starting from the right side, working our way over to the left side. Remember that when you're using your drill, you want to make sure that you keep your drill moving at all times. You don't want to keep it in one spot for too long because it will cause friction and it's going to cause your client's nail to burn. And trust me, it hurts so bad. So make sure that again, you keep your drill moving at all times.
Alrighty, so after we finish filing all of the nails, we're gonna go in with the buffer and we're just gonna buff all of the nails really, really good. And remember, this is just to get rid of any of the scratches left on the nail from the e-file or the hand file because even if i just touch right now it's not you know super smooth you will feel some of those scratches and if you if you just leave it like that you will be able to see those scratches through your polish Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go wash my hands and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I washed my hands. So I decided that I don't wanna do anything too much. So I'm just gonna be doing a ombre with the holographic chrome. So of course, I'm gonna go in with the IBD gel top coat and I'm just gonna apply that on all of my nails and then I'm gonna cure each hand for 60 seconds. Remember that when you're doing any type of chrome, you do want to make sure that um, you only cure it. I know for me, it's always been just 60 seconds. If I cure for over 60 seconds, the chrome would not stick to the nail. So again, only cure for 60 seconds. Or if that is too much for you, you're just gonna have to find you know what kind of works for you because of course, all top coats and all lights are different. So yours might take a little bit longer to cure or it could take you know less time to cure. So you're just gonna have to play around with it and see what works for you. Alrighty, so I did the top coat, so now I'm gonna cure them for 60 seconds and I'm using my Abadi UV LED lamp. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go in with the chrome. I'm gonna use a little sponge, like a makeup wet sponge, dip it into the chrome and then I'm just gonna dab it on the nail. Since it is an ombre, of course, I'm not gonna apply it on all of the nail. We're just gonna place it on the tip and just blend it up towards the middle of the nail. Just like that. Same thing for the rest. Again, we just dip the very tip of the sponge into the chrome, place it on the tip of the nail and just basically just dabbing it on there and then just going up a little bit more as you go but you when you first place it on there just place it right on the tip Alrighty, so just like that. So now we're gonna go in and do another coat of the IBD gel top coat and then we're gonna care for another 60 seconds.
Alrighty, so we just cured it for 60 seconds. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this hand. Okay, so same thing once we've cured this hand for 60 seconds we're gonna go ahead and do the chrome on the tips Alrighty, so I did the chrome on the tips, so now I'm going to go ahead and do another coat of the IBD gel top coat. Alrighty, so I'm going to place them back under the light for another 60 seconds. Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. Really nice and simple and short. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at GetNo32. And I'll see you guys next time.